And welcome back everybody to coverage of the Tencent LPL Summer here. It is week 5, day 1 here as our second match kicks off with Energy Pacemaker Hong Kong on the left there versus Planet of Energy on the right. My name is Pastry Time. I'm going to be joined by Papa Smithy. Papa, an amazing opening game to kick off week 5. I don't know what to do right now because we kind of thrown our expectations off the window but should be a great match here between these two teams. It's one of those results where I have to check myself, you know, do some deep breathing, center myself. I really did see what I saw. If you guys are jumping into this game having missed the previous match, go back and watch it because the first game of a week five, day one, was just crazy. And EPHK here, you know, I mean, they're against a positive energy team who super, super struggled against YG and in their last outing. Maybe they sniff blood. Maybe, but the bands have actually already finished here in this draft as well. We've got Twitch, Lee Sin, and Twisted Fate there, the bands there for EP. And Positive Energy, you've gone Thresh, Elise, and Zach is their three bands. Be interesting to see what the first pick is here. I mean, Elise was the band last game, and Renekton's been a super contested pick, so maybe that'll be him. And Domux here is considering the Javan pick, which, yeah, a strong ganking jungler, never a bad pick. No, I do like the Twitch ban here as well from EPHK, by the way. It seems like some of the teams, at least here in the LPL, are like, you know what, let's just not deal with that guy anymore and ban him out. So I like that that went for the first ban here. Jarvan, as I said, as you said, sorry, very strong jungler, so happy to see him here. Looks like Positive Energy can respond with someone who's been seeing quite a bit of play, actually. Not that guy, though. It was Shen I was thinking of, but Maokai, really? That would be very different. I don't know what's going on anymore, Papa Smithy. We've got all sorts of champions being selected here, so... But we'll wait and see. I mean, Malka would be an interesting choice, but I have to think they're going to move away, and it looks like it's probably going to be Nami. And Nami Shen, as Shen does get locked in there. Yes, Nami Shen. And to be fair, this makes plenty of sense. But Shen, you know, he's kind of seen plenty of play on and off, it seems like, kind of throughout his lifetime, really, as a champion in the league. But it seems a couple of teams are bringing him back here in the LPL. And I have to say, when teams play well with Shen and really understand how his ultimate works and how to apply pressure on the map, Really, really strong here. It's nice to see some Shen being played again. And we even saw PDD from Invictus Gaming mixing things up with that DPS Shen last week. So there are still options when you play Shen. I mean, Sunfire Trinity Force was the famous Darian build, of course. Uh, I mean, PDD went all out. You know, there was a ghost played in that game, but uh, that was when they were far ahead. Or it could just be the traditional tanky Shen that's still super, super strong. Yeah, and regardless, however they play it here, Nami Shen, not a... Not a bad two first picks there for Positive Energy. Looks like APHK can have Caitlyn and Ari as their next two here. And now PE going to move through. Would be a, would be too surprising to see Varus actually, although we haven't seen him for a little while. And at Fiddlesticks though, he would be very very interesting here. I have not seen Fiddle for quite a while, but he may make a return here in this game. Could I was going to say could be support, but I guess with Nami already picked up, that's probably not going to happen. Looks like though we're going to change it up and have Nocturne instead. And Cogmore is the eventual luck here. We haven't seen Cogmore at all in the LPL as far as I can remember, at least in the games we've casted. Still a super strong champion, just a champion that kind of been overlooked for other options. I guess Twitch and, and Vayne uh, most notably recently. But uh, the Cogmore lock-in is super interesting for me. They, don't, they have the Shen here, so you can see the Shen-Cogmore synergy there, having given the immobile high damage dealer that Shen shield. And Nami, you know, her peel is very strong, but Cogmore Nami strikes me as a very weak lane. I think early on, absolutely, I agree with you there. I mean, we talked about Nami Vayne being kind of weak. At least, you know, you've got kind of potential there to outplay your opponents. The or... Condemn, right. The Condemn and the Tumble outplay is there, and I love this lock-in on the EPHK side. The Malphite lock-in. Malphite against a champion with no escape is a beautiful choice. It is, and we have Malphite, Java, and Lulu in the house for EPHK. If, if that's not... You know, the Super Friends initiation dive team, I don't know what is. This is the part where Nama is like, team, please, what, how, how, why? I mean, there's just not much you can do against that initiation trio. No, I mean, Lissandra is the last pick here. You're absolutely right. Could be trouble there. But I have to say, as weak as our early landing is, I cannot think of a, a lane that I think is more powerful, to be perfectly honest, than Cog 1 Nami. There is so much synergy there between the two champions. Everybody knows how powerful Cog can be moving in as a late game hyper carry. And. I like the lane a lot. It's just a matter of can positive energy survive the laning phase as Cogmore and kind of uh, make everything happy from there. I think their team supports him really well, so definitely protecting that Cog. But as you mentioned, Papa, the dive buddies here for EPHK, there is just so much. There are so many problems that Name has to deal with here, and it's going to be very interesting to see if he can deal with all of them. It just, just ended the Lulu ultimate, you know, to complement 
I mean, both Javan and Malphite just have so many tools to work against that Cogmore. The Lulu Ultimate to accentuate that potential for a charm pickoff. It's not a happy day to play, be Cogmore, but if you can get to late game, you know, maybe get that Banshee Veil and start to uh, get those damage items going. I do like the damage options on this uh, positive energy side, just because they have a little bit more damage. It's not a massive amount. It's mostly on the back of the the, the increased Cogmore damage compared to Caitlyn, but I do like them in the late game. But getting there against this really strong EPHK comp is going to be hard. Absolutely, and be interesting to see how these lanes actually shake out here. EPHK have Ari down the bottom right now, so maybe thinking about a 1v2 there. I mean, Caitlyn's certainly a fine champion against Cogmore, especially in the early levels. I mean, Bioarcane Barrage can give you a couple of problems when it hits uh, level 3, I believe, to actually outrange you as Caitlyn. So, you know, Cog definitely gets play in those sort of lanes, but Biochemprise, you know, doesn't last forever and Caitlyn range is always 650. But it looks like EPHK are actually going to rotate mid here and try and pressure Lissandra instead, although, as I say, that everybody's moving back around, but we are going to have the buff started up in about 10 seconds here. And looks like the lanes may be going to shake out as expected. And it looks like with Supercat in the mid, that is exactly what's going to happen here. Yeah, and it'll be on Caitlyn, uh, Caitlyn Lulu here just to harass this combo at every opportunity and make sure that he doesn't leave lane with any sort of a CS advantage. As we do see Caitlyn Lulu actually do the double golems here. They're not worried about getting to lane a bit late and they're just happy to use the high DPS from Lulu on those auto attacks to uh, take down the early camp. Yep, Ding now finishes up his blue buff. Looks like down the bottom. We are going to have those golems finished up for the bottom lane as well. In fact, uh, no CS missed, it seems like, this time around. Kane actually slightly ahead in CS here as Piltover of a Peacemaker. Going to come in and start pushing this lane. Absolutely what you expect here. I mean, Cogmore, in almost any lane he's in, really just wants to freeze the lane in a, in a favorable position, kind of towards his turret if he can. And Caitlyn, of course, as almost always, is going to be wanting to push this lane as fast as possible. I guess the interesting thing is there's not a lot of gank pressure coming out, at least pre-6 from Nocturne here, so... The one thing you can say about double golems in the early level too, it is going to stick Cogmore under her t under his turret as much as possible, and just try and grow the CS lead like that. Yeah, there's a lot of aggression here, much much trading back and forth down towards the bottom lane there. Kane just going to throw out that Q again, harassing them back and forth. The positive energy's credit, they're playing into the aggression here for EPHK. They're actually. I guess a head on trade, although Nami getting a little low here is going to be forced to ebb and flow back up there. And they're going to have, they're certainly going to have to be careful. I think at this point, maybe the trade's a little too good. In fact, Nami getting quite low there with a headshot. Jing Still also, level one there, Pastry Time. Yeah, that's true. They're finally dings over. Those double golems really providing a nice advantage in the early game. In fact, Jing is really low in his jungle. Nocturne, I think, forced to back away from his own double golems. And yeah, I think that's what happened. Nocturne's going to have to go back to base. I was going to say, I really like that Doran's weight, especially on Nocturne, seems like such a great way to start off. But unfortunately, if you can't finish off your jungle, maybe it's a little awkward. Yeah, he actually went back for oh, the camp because no. his smite was up. He's flashing. My goodness, he was on no health bars, according to the according to the champion indicators on the side. That is some impressive calculation from Jin there. Yeah, managed, playing with fire. Managed to hit level 4, so things are well for now here, actually. Even on CS with Jarvan, so didn't waste too much time there. And looks like both of the jungles here. Level 4, uh, Doran's played now. Double Doran's out as Kane down the bottom. They're going to get bubbled up as well. Nami going to try and get in there. Popsy's barrier there as Lao P goes in as well. But it's... Looks like everyone's just going to back away slowly. Again, the aggression from the bottom lane. Very, very tense. In fact, Lao P going to get aggressive. Picks up first blood with the last auto attack there. And a very strong play there from Lulu. All that aggression pays off in the bottom lane for EP. And the level advantage too, Pastry Time. It all comes from that. And I must, I wish I was a fly on the okay, team. Okay, no. Caught himself under tower there. Don't know if he had some sort of technical problem, but that was Must not... Have what... That was a disconnect, as far as I can tell, as the, as the pause comes out. That is super, super awkward. Yep. Looks like, uh, actually, Jojo going to come in here again. Super get quite low, but there's a good knockoff from Jarvan. Jojo going to get it turned around there, and Ari should be able to get out of this one. In fact, even throwing out the damage here onto Jing, the red buff. Jarvan a little too strong. There's the flash auto attack for more damage. The Q in there as well. Very, very close to picking up Jing, but Nocturne lives on a sliver of health there. It looks like Caitlyn is back. Looks like, thankfully for everyone's sake, including yours at home, the uh, pause was skipped in the VOD, but yeah, that was an unfortunate problem there for Kane getting trapped under he that took tower. Free t two free turret heads and the kill went through. I don't know how the rules apply to that, but uh, I guess the only happy thing there is that the support got the kill and there was no uh, assist or experience coming out for uh, Cogmore. Yeah, a little awkward there, unfortunately, but Kane does die to a, a what we assume could be a disconnect, but play has resumed now. I mean, hard to comment on. I think we'll just kind of move exactly. Through. We don't have the information to speculate on it, but super, super awkward. Yeah. 
And now Name has returned to the bottom lane. Double Doran's up by Cog. Vamp Scepter Doran's played up there for Kane. On that Caitlyn. And a little bit lonely right now as Lulu's coming back to lane. Sight Stone already finished up there. We've got Philosopher Stone on Nami's side there as well. So a slight divergence in early items here for both supports. Lulu, interestingly enough, actually still has her Explore Award in her inventory. So couldn't find a good place for that one at level 1 it seems like. There's the Bob we're going to come through as well. Sick of with a bit of the harass, but Lulu going to turn it around there. Pig's now going to come out of those auto attacks as well. So the damage trades, they're just back and forth here. So EPHK, you know, I mean, Caitlyn should still be happy in this lane. The CS being even is probably not something that she's happy with, although Kane, I have to imagine, is suffering a little bit from that DC, but if they can keep playing into Cogmore here and play aggressively, then things will be okay, but Cogmore really does get better in lane once he hits that key level 5 there, really gets the range out on his W, not to mention the increased damage as well, so there could be a chance of positive energy now that Name has dinged 5 to start to play into this Caitlyn a little more. I think, expanding the level 6, uh, the base damage on that Biocane Barrage Ultimate is actually really, really high. It's deceptively high just because it has low base damage against uh, minions, but the damage against uh, champions, the base damage, it's, it's really high. I don't have the values offhand, but for a low spammable short cooldown spell, if you can combo that bubble with potentially an ultimate and then, you know, activating that W ability, really, really powerful. Yeah, living Artillery, very powerful skill. Living Artillery, that's correct. And, uh, I mean, Kog'Maw... In my opinion, may be the most level dependent AD carry in the game. I think him and Tristana are probably fight for that right, but every level for Cogmore is good here. And Nami, happy to hit 5 here for level 3 Bio Cam Barrage, that W. And of course, when Living Artillery happens, the lane completely changes. Like, Cogmore's actually able to play much, much better in damage trades, as you kind of point out there. So, we'll see what happens there. Again, a little awkward down the bottom lane, but things will continue here. A slight advantage for EPHK with their extra kill on the board, but. Only about 500 gold here in this one, so not too bad. But Nocturne moving up towards level 6 as well there, Jing with his double Doran's blades. And Jarvan as well, interestingly enough, with also the same here. Looks like he's already level 6 from some of his early pressure, so that could be a nice advantage here. Now that Jarvan 6 maybe going to look to gank up towards the top lane here, pick up Canines here. Level 7, uh, 7 PS for Malphite as well, so can also combo that. And Ari now going to steal away the red buff, it seems like here. Supercat is going to rotate in here, and there's the red buff going off to Jarvan. So plenty of options here for EPHK, who I have to say, despite the things going a little sour in bottom lane, is I, I think I really like this general then movement and aggression that they put up this game. Now Jing could be in trouble. Good block there from Jing with the spell shield, but damage still coming in. The Stand United will get used there for Shen. The fear comes up as well. There's a follow-up taunt coming through. Dogox walks his way back there, but Boo being very low there. Gonna get picked off as Nocturne chased him with the ult, but Super Cat in mid does manage to all in that Ari. Very, very surprising, given that Jojo is still able to ultimate there. That taunt there coming out as well. Domox could be in trouble here. The damage coming through there. Gonna try and chase down this Malphite. Canines kind of blocking him in front there. Jing with the red buff wants to get a couple more autos on, but can't quite make it happen, unfortunately. And all of a sudden, lots and lots of kills already here in the early stages of this game. About one every two minutes at this point. Good bubble there down the bottom as well. Living Artillery title is going to be very nice there. And a good wild growth there from Lulu. Force flash out there as well. As Kane needs to get out of the way. There, the damage still coming in there. Cogmore trying to chase down, but everybody low on mana down towards the bottom yeah, lane. Completely out of mana. No mana to even put out that last Living Artillery. Probably wouldn't have picked up the kill. But just really, really line ball there from the bot lane. And Domox here, as we move up towards the top lane, kind of an interesting item choice up against Shen. Chalice of Harmony against Shen, Papa Smithy. What are your thoughts? I mean, it makes sense. I mean, Chalice of Harmony alleviates Malphite's mana problems. You see here, he's got two points in the Q, four points in the E. He needs to wave clear a lot. So having you know infinite mana, basically, which you get from that Chalice of Harmony. And then, of course, Shen's harass is his Q ability. It does magic damage, so... I think it's a very, it's a very nice pickup. So John looks here, just gonna clear out some of these waves, ground slam those minions, want to attack them up and farm in the top lane. Actually, a nice little lead here for Kano. It's able to cover a slight CS lead here in the top. Really, just aggressively pushing in here, and it's not often that we see Shen have, I would say, a super positive matchup. But for whatever reason, Kano is actually able to get a nice foothold here in the top lane. It looks like he's gonna be rushing that Spirit Visage just to have that cooldown reduction for the global presence. But Malphite with that unstoppable force should be able to cancel that ultimate, or he has the summoner teleport to follow in and do his own bidding. So Boopin gonna get spotted here, his other knock-up coming out onto Sika, but Kay, they're not able to follow up on that one, unfortunately, so Booping will just walk away. He still has his ultimate, I believe, has not used it yet. Well, they may have used it up towards the top lane in the last little exchange. But you know, just looking for a gank here. Nocturne, the only one with a real successful gank, and he kind of luckily caught Jarvan, they're actually invading on the red side. 
So Jing already used his ult to pick up that kill there, but still very close here between these two. Jing actually proxying behind this top turret here as Malphite's been forced out. Kanon's going to wail into that turret there as well. So a bit of jungle pressure here up towards the top. But Positive Energy going to try and take out that the first turret of the game here. And as we kind of settle things out here, looks like bottom lane returning for Energy Pacemaker as well. Very close game here with about 200 gold up for EPHK. It's just the bot lane you think should have gone differently just because you know, we have that disconnect which you know what can you do about that at this point oh but... bubble down there as well that could be bad news the tidal wave once more time and that combo very very strong there positive energy laupi actually could be in trouble there as well a good double slow there with glitter lancer living artillery once more will chase in there and do some damage good void is there as well nowhere for laupi to run the bubble gonna come in a wild growth very nicely activated there but it's not enough unfortunately the double kill they're coming out unstoppable force though sand united on top as well the dog's going aggressive trying to make it happen but he gets taunted as as well as Kanon's moves through. Now the tower dive's gonna happen, Shen. Tanking plenty of that damage, but Name wants more low on mana. Java now gonna maybe try and pick him off here. In fact, Cogball, realizing what's happening, is kind of gets in position to use the Cathy and surprise. And Super Cat down the bottom as well, chasing it onto Sika. A great taunt though from Kanon's. Not quite enough as the RA Ignite picks up Nami there. And just absolute action in this game. That is the one thing I can say. Seems to be our theme of day one of Week 5 Papa Smithy. It's aggression everywhere. Yeah, it's very nice map movement from EPHK there, but as you can see, a lot of turret damage coming out from the Sandra, so that makes the trade a little bit less favorable unless they can pick up the dragon. Yeah, first turret still actually hasn't fallen here in this game as we tick past the 12 and a half minute mark, so pressure definitely on the top side, pressure there in mid as well from positive energy, so despite being slightly behind in the kill scores here, seem to have pressured some of these turrets nicely. The EPHK, speaking of, will now be moving in, cleaning up that first turret of the game. They'll take out the ever crucial mid turret here and probably even rotate up towards Dragon. It is worth noting that they gave red buff to Kane in the bot lane just to solidify that early game advantage that was afforded by the picks here, and then they lost the kill trade there. So Cogmore getting through the lane definitely more favorably than they would have hoped when they had the lane matchups on paper. And interestingly, in terms of Cogmore's item choices, Blade of the Rune King is going to be coming out here. Now, Blade of the Rune King is an item that it's kind of interesting, right? Because it certainly feels like his very, very old standby of Madrid's Blood Rage, which sadly is no longer with us. But obviously as a long-range champion with his W ability, you know, you're thinking to yourself maybe how often does he get to use the active ability because it's kind of short range. What do you think of Bork here on Cogmore? I think it's slowly become the standard on Cogmore, not because of the aggressive options that it gives Vayne and... Um, Twitch? Twitch, and that's, you know, why we see it on them. It's just because it gives them that dueling... Uh, that dueling potential to complement their complement their skill sets, but in this case, it's more for self peel pastry time. It's more just to give him another slow to be able to peel away from a tank like Shen. If Shen's chasing him down or Nocturne's chasing him down, Bork will allow him to open up some range there. And as you point out, it does have that same Blood Razor effect. It synergizes with the Last Whisper and the attack speed, so it gives Cogmore attack speed, which is something he craves. Obviously, to do W damage. And I guess, I mean, point, you know, for the for the gold value, it probably gives him the biggest power jump when you complete it just because it synergizes so well with that W. Yep, so double drones, build water cutlass to build there for Nami. We've got a uh, bloodthirster rush, it seems like, here for Kane. Got himself a Vamp Scepter plus a BF Sword, and just the one Doran's there for Caitlyn, which makes a lot of sense. You're kind of a long-range champion, you don't really need the extra health, because never, you're usually not in trouble of dying from burst damage. Cogmore, of course, being kind of immobile, sometimes in trouble, or often in trouble, especially against the Energy Pacemaker team that they've cooked up here. Malphite, speaking of things that Cogmore could be in trouble from, his Sunfire game is almost finished here, as a great bubble comes out there on Kane. The Void is moving in there as well, the Tidal is also going to come in. A Force Flash out there, and that's a Flash Forward there for Nama, but a Stoppable Force and Javita in there mix now the knockout comes on a second the wild go through a second knockout there as well and beautiful pressure there down the bottom lane for EPHK completely turn that around yeah and unstoppable force I mean Malphite out of nowhere he didn't have teleport up there pastry time that was just superior map movement coming out from EPHK and they're looking good in the early game yeah I mean they seem to be quite aggressive here despite believe I think still at the bottom of the table here in terms of the LPL summer so far. I mean, easily pace time. They have the reverse score of what OMG had before the previous game. They are a 1-0 and Oh, Java and Cataclysm there as well. Forcing the flash here from Jing. Also taking out the bottom turret. I mean, we mentioned it. In this game, Positive Energy, I believe, second place currently in the standings so far in the Tencent LPL Summer. Looking like a very strong team, looking, have really beaten some of the old guard of trying to hear his Nocturne. Gonna make his move in the mid there, gets completely blown up though. Sanji United pop there as well, Super Cat though, forced to get out. Frozen Tomb though is gonna seal it up, and Lissandra's gonna pick up that kill there. But the fact that four members of Positive Energy committed to killing the Ari, and Super Cat almost killed Jing is quite a play there from that Ari. 
And it's kind of the reverse of the previous point, but it's important to note that two kills were netted with Malphite's movement before. But I mean, a kill in a mid turret, similar result for Positive Energy. Yes, positive Energy going to pick up their first turret of the game here. Absolutely crucial that they pick up that mid turret, and they do in fairly timely fashion. They're going to pop over, look to maybe steal the blue buff, but it's not there. So JoJo's just going to a little disappointed there, walk up towards the top lane and try and maybe see us up there. Spirit Reside finished up on Shen there, so Kanan's that ult's going to be up a little faster. And even though, you know, I guess Malphite does do quite a bit of magic damage, so it works there nicely. But I have to say, just generally, I quite like Spirit Visage early on Shen. And I think one way or the other, you're going to go with the same first two items with Sunfire Cape, Spirit Visage. The order just depending on your lane matchup, I suppose. He looked down here, Infinity Edge was the actual f final complete on Kane here. Of course, gives him the most right click damage onto enemy champions. Caitlyn, not a champion you usually expect by the ranking early on, so. A lot of single target damage coming out of Kayla. Okay, no, so gonna walk in wrong place, wrong time, the knock up there, almost landing for booping. As Shen's gonna taunt himself out of the way. That was maybe a little impatient there for EPHK, but k gonna be happy to get away with his life there. As he goes back up towards the top lane, just a little further back now, gonna try and farm up a little safer possibly. The Oracle's out here as well, so booping now can move through with this aggressive drive and jungle. I mean, he doesn't have too many other items, he's really got Double Duran's Spirit Stone. Kindle gem is his items. That doesn't build into much of anything here. A sticker there. Once more, that REDFG coming out. And we kind of failed to mention this before, but part of the reason why Supercat was doing such a good job of almost killing that Nocturne despite being, what, essentially 1v4 after the fact, that DFG Ari came up very nicely here. And really, this is what you're afraid of when you see Ari. It's so, so scary at this point of the game when she can just pretty much kill anyone. And it was a snowboard DFG too, but I mean, she got it super early. She's almost got an Abyssal to complement that early DFG, so looking very, very strong as the Ari, as the Sunfire Capes completed on Malphite. And I mean, it's a very interesting, I, the one thing you can say from the Infinity Edge pickup from Kane is they're not as focused on pushing and sieging with that Caitlyn. We've seen a lot more Bloodthirster Caitlyn coming out recently, because even though it doesn't have that same single target damage, you just AoE downwave so fast with that built over Peacemaker and critical chance of course does not affect turrets so Bloodthirst are the favorable choice there instead going for that single target damage. Yeah just a little bit more team fighter almost feels like I mean EPHK they kind of managed to pick up their towers just with the aggression that they've been putting out in the early stages if they're maybe afraid of having to team fight Cogmore in the mid game Infinity Edge makes a lot of sense it's going to make that 5v5 whenever you decide to force it that much stronger so could be timing related could just be a preference thing as well Kane maybe just prefer that IE but kind of curious to see that one picked up here I can see the argument for both but Kane has of course gone with Infinity Edge here for this one just kind of move through as well. Again, kind of note Jarvan still looking for items. Malphite, though, doing well. Shen, also with his Sunfire Cape on the way. He's picked up Spirit Visage plus Giant Spelt. And Nocturne. We've seen Illusions Nocturne uh, in recent weeks of the LPL Papa Smithy. That guy seems to like going quite aggressive. I think I like Jing's build here. Kind of nice and balanced. He's got Hex Trick, and then he's like, you know what? I'm going to move towards Aegis, and he's got Emblem of Valor. Yeah, he has the AD coming out of the double Doran's blade and the Hex Drinker. That's still a nice amount of early damage, but you're right, he's going to probably rotate into the Aegis and the Bulwark here. Yeah. Abyssal Scepter, actually the first item up for Lissandra, just noticing that one as well. Do you like that? I mean, we already mentioned Abyssal Scepter and Ari and how well that synergizes. I think commonly, as you kind of said, Papa, people figuring out Lissandra a little still, but it almost feels like Zonius is just something you want. If not first, then probably second here for Jojo. It'll probably be the second pickup. I think the Magic Resist was just an answer to the very early needlessly large rod and, and AP that Supercat was getting. It was like that to quell the snowball basically, as we see potentially a fight coming out around the dragon. Dragon already picked up the very fast step for EPHK. Now Supercat gonna go and I can see the teleport moving to us on Malphite. He's in the house, the great knock up there from Lulu. And the Kagan's gonna trap canines in there as well. They're looking for the initiation, but the choke point kind of blocked off there. Now the carry's gonna fight each other. A beautiful taunt there from Shen coming out and everybody getting chased down here. Kane maybe gonna pick up one. Oh, flash out there as well from Living Artillery. And a three for three trade there as they go even. The dragon and of course we'll give the advantage there for that fight in favor of energy pacemaker but beautiful play from both sides there to just ease that fight out and it seems like only the bottom line lives Papa Smithy and that's important here actually a very awkward fight coming out from EPH oh the flash incoming here I'll try and make it happen yeah, no, man wants to blow these spells that Void is out there as well. Gets turned into a cupcake, though, as the Hex comes out there. But Kane, though, looking bad there, gets bubbled up there as a shot that comes out from Cogma. Now, no, man, quite the hoodlump. He's going to try and make it happen. Flashes out as well there as the red buff is going to be enough. But no, that shield coming out there for Lao P. Sicker, though, with vision there with that ward. Managed to get the ebb and flow for the kill. Not every day you see that one coming out. 
And I guess four for four, four for five at the end of the day there with positive energy. Picking up the extra kill there, but of course energy pacemaker with the dragon. I guess the awkward thing though is that, I mean, Ari at that point had DFG and Abyssal complete. Like she was completely huge on mid game items, but died with her flash up, which lets you know that probably some mispositioning there. Didn't feel like they got the maximum purchase from that Ari pick in that fight. I thought it would have been a far more one sided fight for energy pacemaker Hong Kong. Yeah, I mean, definitely something to go back and watch. Uh, Jarvan's ult looked interesting, I think. Again, it seemed like all the carries kind of got trapped in between each other, and then it looked like Positive Energy were behind, but it came out with a beautiful taunt to pick up the last few members there, and then they were just kind of able to aggressively dive there and outplay them towards the bottom turret there. So, still a very even game in this one. EPHK have a slight lead here of about 2,000 gold, which, you know, they'll be happy with. They've been playing aggressively, absolutely deserve the lead that they've carved out for themselves, but Positive Energy, we kind of mentioned it in their compo, buddy, and just the way they generally like to play it at, or have been playing recently I think they're pretty happy with their team chemistry especially with this sort of setup here Kogmo and Nami with some good frontline and some great control from Lissandra they're happy to drag this game out absolutely I mean the longer the game goes with the Kogmo on your team the better and more happy you are so your career uh, pastry time working on probably that no it's gonna be that phantom dance a second here he's just going for the maximum damage and if they don't fight till he has you know Phantom Dance the last whisper positive energy is super super pumped about that no, I'm just going to keep farming here on Kogma. So Sika now has an Oracles of his own, so he's going to be able to clear out some wards as well. I think the biggest difference here in this game, and part of the reason why the mid game looks like it's going to be stretched out a little longer, so despite the fact that the teams are close on gold, and the items therefore kind of reflect that, the extra towers that EPHK have is affording them a lot more time to move around the map and a lot more chances at aggression here and you know they've kind of got the counter oracles to move the wards out so they can reclaim vision of their own jungle but just in general you can see positive energy really backs up against it when it comes to moving around the map and they're just gonna have to try and protect their turrets up as best they can they've got shown up in the top lane to maybe do some split pushing but EPHK can absolutely afford to be aggressive in the lower third of their opponent's map and positive energy do not have that luxury right now and EPHK have two options with this Malphite here. Of course, Malphite, if he's anywhere near sight of Shen, is able to cancel that stand United. But he also has that stand, that summon a teleport. So it seems like they want to keep Malphite grouped for that potential surprise, unstoppable force, rather than just play reactionary to that Shen until the teleport's back up. Yeah, that's definitely a good point there. And that summon spell is coming back up cool down here. Kanan's, of course, with his ultimate, trying to just push out whatever land he can, going towards the bottom lane now. Maybe try and clam up a couple of extra towers here for positive energy as they only have the mid turret. It looks like now Jing gonna go in on that super cat as well. The Sand United coming through as well. A good spirit rush over the top and Domox actually gonna spot them up, but he gets frozen to another super cat now coming in as well. Jojo gonna get chunned up there as the hex comes in, and that's gonna be the unstoppable force. But Cogwell's gonna pick up the counter kill as Malphite goes down here. The taunt coming through for Shen just trying to close the distance a little bit. I think the rest of EPHK are going to be able to get out here. Lulu trying to cut in the back with Gitterlands as well. Kana still very aggressively taunting here. Just wants to close the distance, but gets chummed up. There's nowhere else to run. There's a slot and another there as Mandy Calibonet goes into that Gitterlands. So Positive Energy forced to back out there. A one for one trade there as Malphite goes out for Lissandra. But I think in general, Positive Energy not too unhappy with that trade. There's no real front line. Because Booping, honestly, as Jarvan, he's reasonably tanky, but he's not the same initiator that Malphite is. And any equal trade where positive energy don't lose an objective from, I mean, it complements them because it just delays the game further. Both teams have to regroup, get their health back, get their mana back. More time for Nami to farm on that Twitch. On that, sorry, Cogmore. More time for Chen to split push up the top as well, and more time for Nocturne to work on the bottom tower here. I mean, Nocturne, it's an interesting split pusher. You can definitely, you know, move in with your ultimate when you've got it, but pushes down the mini waves quite quickly as well. So there's almost the triple push threat that can come out from positive energy as well. And, I mean, we didn't even bring it up before, actually, but Positive Energy have kind of one global and one semi-global there between Shen and Nocturne, and they haven't quite used them, you know, to super, to massive effect there, using, you know, piggyback that Nocturne in with a Shen on top of him, but up the top there with the Genkut Supercat kind of saw the interaction, and they definitely have the potential to really spread their pressure out all across the map here, and that probably is going to get them to late game where they really, really want to be. I don't know, with that Spirit Visage, they can afford to be a bit more liberal with that Sand United cooldown, I mean, with that cooldown reduction compared to the summoner teleport which at times you know, especially in the early game a very similar cooldown to shen's ultimate shen's ultimate much much shorter at this point yeah it looks like some items 
now finished up for both sides here as well. We've got uh, Zonya, sorry, completed on Lissandra now as well as that Abyssal Scepter. Spirit of the Ancient Golems up for Java now as well. Caitlyn working on it. Looks like a last whistle, though. She's got a pickaxe and a zeal, so it's kind of looking for the triple threat of damage items there with IE, PD, and Last Whisper, but hasn't quite decided which one they want to finish next. I would guess Phantom Dancer, but if you're getting a zeal and you have a pickaxe, you're probably just using zeal as more of a transitional item, and you want that Last Whisper a little faster so you can do kind of maximum AD damage. Cogman now with his Phantom Dancer finished up as well. Has a Negatron cloak for himself, so we're going to be building up towards a quick silver search, it seems like, at least at some point here in this game. And just in general, Shem's looking tanky, Malphite's looking tanky. I mean, honestly, with a game this close, one really big team fight couldn't put either team in a spot where they need to win here. I guess my question for you, Papa, is is the onus on EPHK to make something happen sooner rather than later? Oh, never mind. Supercat here trying to make it happen. But there's a tide wave coming through there. Jinga to dive in there as well. Supercat, the target they really want there. But Jarvan, maybe going to chat them off here. A good ult there from Luther. But Jojo protects himself in the frozen tomb. They can't get them on a combo as they try and chase him in there. But there's the pick off as Jojo's going to go down. Ari able to clean that one up there. Domox taking quite a bit of damage, but... A 5 for 4 here if Pearls of Venture want to keep going. Ace in the hole popped off in there as well. Looks like Cogwell trapped up to the side there as Canines gets Sean back in. Malphite over the top there as Shen looks for the taunt and finds it there. Name actually picks up the kill in the booping and actually flashing out that dog. Running away there is that Cogwell but finally goes down. Now Domok's very low in there as well. Blows up there as damage just everywhere. And the triple kill for Caden in and amongst it all. Kane just free hitting the entire time as Cogmore picks up a double in amongst the craziest as well. Four for two trade there in favor of Energy Pacemaker Hong Kong. Kane just absolutely stood in the right spot the entire time. And going back to your original question, Pace your time on whether EPHK need to take the game to positive energy here. Although we're talking, I've been talking so much about how Cogmore outscales Caitlyn in terms of damage here. The one thing to remember is that it's dangerous thinking about the game so linearly. It's dangerous thinking like we did in the Invictus Gaming match. Oh, they've got Rise, Carthus, and Bane. They've got the late game. Because you have to remember here that Malphite, Ari, Jarvan, especially with the amplification that Lulu, there's a lot of potential for the instant kill on Name, regardless of where he goes. He's going to need to build, you know, the three or four DPS items. He's not going to be able to get tanky enough to deal with that. If you've always got the answer to Cogmore in your pocket, or the potential for it, that's very, very powerful. Oh, blown up in the mid now. on Kane exchanging quite a bit of damage. A good hex there from Larpley. Supercat chasing it as well. The charm just missing as the zone is happens there. Dodo just going to get poked down there as Jing just fails to spell shield that Yordle snap trap. Nocturne clearly wanted Delicious Cupcake too much. Now Positive Energy actually going to move towards Baron here, so looking for the Counter Baron after that mid push. The inhibitor in mid is down there as EPHK just took that one out. Positive Energy, they may be able to pick themselves up a Baron here. It'd be a really, really nice to take this off the map. But Domox here actually teleported in. He's looking to try and make a difference. Taking quite a bit of damage here. Positive Energy coming in there. Supercat looking forward as well as the Tidal Wave comes through. Booping now on top of them as well. Going to make the Cataclysm happen as Nama is going to get blown up there. But Domox is now down as he's going to go down to Shen. Laupi coming through as well. Though. Jin getting low as Ace and the Hulk come through. Pops off that Nocturne there for EPHK. And a two for one trade there. Positive Energy, I like the idea of trying to force that Baron, but. Domox there with that teleport, absolutely too good there in terms of reaction, and now I think Energy Pacemaker are going to be the ones to pick up Baron. It's just such an interesting close topsy-turvy game, pastry time. We can never trade too much on what's on paper here just because both teams oh, are playing out their socks for the win. EPHK, they'd really like it here as well. You we mentioned it in our last game, but 6th, sorry, 7th and 8th is not where you want to be here in the LPL. You really want to hit at least 6 if you can there. Baron finishes by Jarvan as well. The fight will start the K9. In on Chen comes through, but Lassandra gets picked up by Ari. And Kane, they're going to pick up even more kills there. Two members of EPHK fall. Two of them lose the Baron buff, but probably crucially, the two carries Ari and Kate and retain it. And of course, all that gold going over to them as well. And specifically to Caitlyn, pastry time, coming out of all those engages with that earlier trip with more exit kills and objectives there. I mean, he's gone back and basically finished her last whisper and straight up bought a Quicksilver Sash from all that engagement, that three minute period there. So lots of gold there dumped under that. Caitlyn has a nice item finished up here. Cogmore not, not doing too badly, of course. Looks like he wants to finish up his QSS sooner rather than later and just trying to get to clear some of the minions out towards the bottom lane here. Nami really just needs to keep farming if he can. He's about 20 CS behind Caitlyn or, or the gold between these two teams. Still relatively close. EPHK have actually carved themselves out a nice little lead here with 5,500 gold. At 30 minutes, that's not a massive lead, but it's still something here. And more importantly, they just really have seemed to find their way around this map. It's still five turrets to two at 30 minutes, Papa Smithy. And the real issue for positive energy here is that Cogmore has no pattern of items he can build in the next five minutes to deal with this EPHK comp. 
If he goes for, say, the Banshee Veil to stop one of the initiation spells, he's not going to have the damage to burst down a Sunfire Cape Randuin's Malphite. And if he goes for the pure damage, they just have so many answers to close the distance and kill him that it just feels like he's just stuck between two minds here, isn't that, yeah, I mean, I think it, at that point it's really which team plays better. I mean, if the game's going to stay relatively even, although Energy Pacemaker certainly have a nice little lead here. Looks like the sixth turret of the game for them is actually going to get taken out there as they really trying to put the work on with this Baron buff. I, I mean, mean, if you ask me, you should go full DPS and just play out of his skin. I think I think that makes sense. I mean, maybe a QSS just for a little bit. I mean, he's already got it. He's probably needs to build something out of that Negatron Cloak, but I agree. I think... His team kind of built to protect him. I think they should just see if they still have that team fight in them. I mean, we saw in, I believe, one of their games in Week 4 just play absolutely incredibly as a team with a comp that we thought, again, on paper, looked like it was absolutely unplayable in the late game Ogmore against Ogmore is no Ezreal when it comes to late game uh, hyper carry pastry time. And although that sounds like a complete contradiction, the ability of getting that late game uh, ability to reposition as often as you can with 40% CDR Ezreal is not something Cogmore can ever hope to emulate. He's just got the damage. Yeah, I mean, he's got plenty of damage as well. He's standing DPS absolutely through the roof, but of course, the key word there is standing because Jojo going to look to go in Jing there, diving in the back on a cane, trying to make it happen. There's a good bubble there. Going to stop Super Cat. The Torn there as well from Shen. Beautiful play there. Is now Jing going to get chased out here? They've actually kept Kane alive in the back as well of EPHK. Cogmore free hitting in there as well. Everybody running low there. It's only a one for one. There's the Torn on to allow P to pick him up as well. Although Moog is somehow still alive there, gets picked up by Jojo. The Sanja comes in now, booping, reinitiating. Domhawks back in there as well. Kane there at the last minute, ace in the hole. Will pick up two there as Malphite just goes down there to the Sandra. A three for three team fight again. So close between these two teams. Absolutely insane team fights every single time. I think Caitlyn died to minions there, pastry time. They're making it a four for three, but you're right, just a nail biter. Everyone on flashing health bars, both AD carries getting just enough pill from their team, and we leave that with no more of an impression on who will win the next fight. No, I have to say the little thing there for me in that fight is Supercat just got completely shut down. I'm sorry, I don't know if Flash Ignite up. Yeah, that does sound like that. I, I don't know if the up. ultimate was up as well because Spirit Rush is still off cooldown, and I mean, just got Aqua Prison into the perfect Shentaunt and completely shut down there in that one. You could tell, I mean, if Supercat there is able to get into the back end as free reign of that Cogmore, you maybe see a very different fight there for EPHK, but as it is though, a 4 for 3 trade just in favor of positive energy there thanks to some great play and a little bit of help from the minions, so I don't know what's going to be happening in this game. I mean, the goal difference obviously in favor of energy pacemaker, but as this game ticks on, that goal difference really doesn't matter too much, and it's not a massive difference here. I mean, EPHK have done everything they can to really clear out some of these objectives. There's Booping here in the jungle, gonna get himself tuned up there. Lampy gonna try and get him out there. Super Cat though, chasing him for Kano's as the damage comes in. Locket popped in there as well. Lassandra looking for the E, but doesn't quite decide to follow up on it. The rest of EPHK coming through there as well. Teleport's actually up on Malphite, so Domhawks was always gonna get in there. Super Cat actually spirit rushing there. Is that going in for Jing, actually? The damage is coming through. The charm will just miss their ace in the hole. They're maybe going to pick up Nocturne. He's very low there. As Jing, the Hex Drinker, popping there to give himself just alive a little longer. The Fox Fire coming in. A Super Cat flashes out. But a good taunt there. The Tidal Wave in there as well. A good zone is there from Super Cat. And again, EPHK around the back end to try and chase these out. But Stand United used on top of Jojo in stasis. Now they follow up with damage there as well. Dom Fox going to take quite a bit here as Malfoy. But he's so tanky. Gets taunted up there as Lissandra goes in. Now Jarvan on top of Name as well. But positive energy, they're positioning too good here in this space. Nowhere for Kane to be to do any sort of free hitting. And a little too aggressive there for Energy Pacemaker. Lose another trade there narrowly. Three for two in favor of PE. Just a positioning error there. Kane in no position to stand in DPS. No DPS at all, barring a late peel to have a Peacemaker there. To only go three for two there, it almost flatters. Uh, EPH because that was a really, really big positioning misplay from them. Yeah, I mean, ace in the hole, not enough there, certainly with the three items that Kane has. Infinity Edge, Phantom Lens, the last move, so it would have loved to be in range auto-attacking in here. It's not like we have, I don't know, some melee champion here. It's Caitlyn, 650 auto-attack range can usually make something happen, but very aggressive dive there from Energy Pacemaker cost them quite a bit in this team fight, and positive energy doing the one thing that they probably need to be doing in this game, just delaying it as long as they can. I mean, 35 minutes we're almost up to now in this game. The gold difference that we've got, not only is it narrowing between these two teams, still only about 5,000 gold in favor of EPHK. It's gonna, it matters less and less as the clock ticks down here. I mean, look at the inventories on both sides. You can tell, Papa, ev almost everyone is stacked up full here. And the final Negatron clock upgrade is the Banshee's Veil here. It makes a lot of sense as able to 
to prevent one of those initiation spells, but just because they have the backup, it might not be enough for Kog'Maw to live here. I mean, you can also say that Malphite is really trading on his base damages here, and of course gives him health and magic resist to take on that Malphite damage, but there's no one correct item to pick up here for Kog'Maw whatsoever, and you have to think that last item needs to be the Infinity Edge. Absolutely, I mean, he needs damage here. The, they need to kill Domox when he goes in, and he will go in hard. He is playing Malphite. EPHK here looking to set up for this Baron once more though. And now both teams going to be put to the test one more time here in the 5v5. Oracles on both sides of course really jostling for position here. And both teams have good initiation as well. I think definitely the advantage on that side has to go to Energy Pacemaker. But positive energy they can certainly make plays with this comp. And we've seen when they're able to get into the comfort zone and really just play together as a team. They seem to play absolutely out of this world League of Legends. No matter the comp that they really have here. And they've got an important character that they can protect here as well with Cogmo. And he's almost has items right now. I mean, I think one of the things about QSS maybe not being that good is that unfortunately for Cog War, most of the CC that's coming out of are knockups, which of course you cannot cleanse out of. And look at this, they've actually got the positioning advantage here, pastry time. Around the side of the is gonna get thrown out. Just a bit of poke there from Living Artillery, but EPHK not interested. In fact, never mind, P gonna go around the side. Tidal Wave gonna move in there. Jojo getting forward there. Sanji Knight on top of it as well. Jing there diving in the back, but Zoli's there gonna come through. Looks like Kane's gonna get torn up by Kane as well. And they're just trying to dump on him there. Great play there from Positive Energy. They managed to peel off the AD carry. Kogmore still alive as well. As sick of the only one to go down right now. Booping nowhere near in the right spot there. And now Domhawk's likely gonna get chased down as well. Doesn't quite get slowed up though as Living Artillery is trying to chase him out. Looks like Supercat towards the top will recall out also. Lao P's okay as well. But a good two for one trade there for positive energy. And the real bad news here for EPHK is they're probably about to lose Baron. They have a crazy DPS fight going on here, Base Trap. Lulu! Oh, Jojo going in. Lao P with the damage. A hex up as well. Almost gonna pick him up. The locket pop there as well. And the support outplays the AP mid there. As Lao P is able to pick up the kill onto Jojo. Unfortunately for Lulu, not going to be able to steal Baron as well, though maybe they're moving in for it. Dohox wants to go in, he's looking for the steal, the smite's going to come through there, Nocturne will pick it up there, the Baron Nasher has been felled by positive energy. Dohox flashes out there, but already dead as the last auto chases him across the wall there. Now Supergate going to try and make the damage happen, but double buff Nocturne here forces the Spirit Rush there. Supergate actually going back in, maybe trying to get the damage done, but Jin quite tanky there on that Nocturne. Supercat again back once more time, but the Blade of the Rune King pop there as well. The Charm coming in there, but I think Supercat probably dead here. The good Flash Taunt coming through there as well. And that's going to be one more kill for Name. 13, 7, and 9 now for this Cogmore. And this game is getting crazy, 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 Papa Smith. you got to watch your voice there, Patreon, because we're having really long fights. That's the second fight we've had this game, about the three-minute long fight there. And I think maybe EPHK have just outlived their window here, outlived their usefulness in terms of the team comp here, just because that was the second fight in a row where Kane was actually caught in a bit of a nothing position next to Ari, away from all her tanks, away from all her peel, away from the Lulu ult even, and just died for free there. And EPHK, two positioning errors this late in the game, almost impossible to come back from, I'd have to say. And I think part of the issue is Maybe not necessarily that Kane is out of position, I think he is, but it's also that the way EPHK are kind of envisioning the way fights want to go for them is that they're aggressively initiating on Kogmo specifically. Here is Jojo going to go in as well for the Ring of Frost, booping, getting get himself torn up. Kogmo's actually nowhere near this one, so maybe he has to be careful, but it's 3v3 right now. Domok's going to come through as well, they're going to make a 4v3, then Jojo stands United plus the Frozen Tomb that Shan's going to pour himself in as k come through. Now Name's going to join the party. Damage coming in there for Kogmo as Jojo narrowly gets out of the way. Domok's getting eaten there and positive energy no matter the situation they seem to just find themselves a way to win supercat returns to the mid but two kills already down there for energy pacemaker and playing just absolutely the team that we expect when we see them not when they played against young glory towards the end of week four this is the positive energy we know papa smithy absolutely they've just played so so smartly and well here i mean jojo bought about six to seven seconds of aggro there. Enough for Name to come and join the fight. Enough for them to win the fight. Middle inhibitor now under threat here. EPHK gonna look for the miracle defense here on this one. They might actually have to back off here. The good torn coming in for Kane at the damage. Gonna try and dump on a super cat. Nami they're standing there trying to pick up Kane. But GA is actually there very low is that Cogmore. Maybe forced to back away there. Kane adds one more. Time taunts that Supercat up, but Zonya is now used for Ari as well. Kane is still doing in the damage. Supercat is going to go down here. Name picks up the inhibitor. Another taunt there as Kane's going to get himself killed here as well. Living until the on top. Wild growth for Lulu will protect him though. With the damage still done here. Ace in the hole going to be blocked up by Jing. 
Lapi again chasing it down, trying to make more DPS Lulu happen. Oh my god, Domhawk's around the side, I see him! He teleports in, but a great void who's there from Nami cuts that off. Potentially a devastating teleport there from Malphite, but his flash, crucially, is still on cooldown. And Positive Energy gonna get away with that middle inhibitor. This is just a game of inches, Pastry Time. There isn't any big advantages here. We saw EPHK early in the game get a big advantage, and Positive Energy, no one fight, no two fights is allowed them to crawl into it. It's three or four engages, three or four times they've managed to outplay EPHK. They've called themselves back into the game. They're still behind on turrets, but they're ahead in gold, and that is an important thing when you have a Cogmore comp. Yeah, they've basically earned 8,000 gold from being down about 5, now up about 3 here in this one. I mean, 41 minutes we're now up to. Gold really not going to matter here at this point in the game. It's definitely about how the team's going to play 5v5, but as far as team fight goes, positive energy channeling the spirit of the team that they were the former, the, the B team of World Elite, really just looking so good together as a team. And, you know, you look at a comp like this, you see it, you're like, you have to play it right, you really have to be careful, but all the positive energy are doing what they need to be doing here. And I think the same cannot be said for Energy Pacemaker Hong Kong. And I don't know if it's a philosophy thing where they're just using everything to try and kill this Cogmore, or, or if they're just not as experienced as a team like Positive Energy, but whatever's going on, whatever's been happening in the last 15 minutes worth of fights, Positive Energy have come out on top every single time. And that's that's not just comp, that's not just, oh yeah, we outpick you in terms of late game. That's beautiful, beautiful team play from PU. And look at Nama now, page time. 15, 7, 10, Infinity Edge, Play the Ruin King, Fan Dancer, Guardian Angel to replace the Banshee Veil. The Last Whisper and the Berserker Graves. He's hit the critical mass. Barring some distortion boots or a boot enchant, he is six items. And he, I don't know if they have an answer to the Guardian Angel full DPS Cogmo. I was going to say, I do like the G, the GA here from Nome. I think if, given how EPHK just know they need to kill you, getting a second life makes a lot of sense here. GA on Jojo is kind of cool as well there from Lissandra. I mean, that's just troll city pastry time. GA on Lissandra, I mean, absolutely, it's... It's five seconds of stasis it's and an extra even life. Don't even bother DPSing me. That's five seconds plus. Is revive three seconds maybe on Guardian Angel? It's just yeah. I mean, there just should be a troll face over this Jodo's Lissandra <laughs> icon on the right here. The nice thing too is that's still damage being put out as well. Lissandra can get in aggressively, afford to die or just stasis out, whatever she really needs to do. And then from there, I mean, Lissandra's still doing relevant damage. If you spam Ice Shot out over a long team fight, we've been seeing extended team fights in this game. Then, I mean, Lissandra's still relevant. You can't choose to ignore that damage. It's still there. Booping double knockup. They're going to come through. But is the damage going to come in? In fact, Ignite used there. In fact, maybe even looking to go in here. Jojo throws out the he thinks about it. He doesn't quite want to go here. Kano did the split push as well. All the while here, Positive Energy have still had the Shen pressure. Kano's also been on point this game as well as Shen. And this is, this is crunch time for EPHK. If they're going to have their own late game and turn this around, they've really got to make some miracles happen here. But we're going to have Shen up the top pressuring that inhibitor. Four down the bottom for Pia, pressuring the bottom side. We start booping, gonna go in, he knows who he needs, he wants Name Sanch, Nana on top! There's Wild Growth Pots on top, will force Name quite low, there's Supercat diving in as well, but Cataclysm actually knocks him off, Name happy with this situation, there's the rest of Pia peeling in there as well, legendary for Name, doesn't even pop the GA, Domhawks there, flashes forward for the Seismic Chart to pick it off, a beautiful triple frost ring there for Lissandra, they snare everybody up, now Kane's GA is going down, but Jojo picks up that kill, Kills everywhere for positive energy. Lulu the only one left alive, not for much longer. No, never mind, is Lapley's gonna be okay. But a four for zero, clean fight there for PE with nobody else dying. The bottom inhibitor's gonna fall. The top inhibitor can fall if they want it, but pretty much at this point, everything's done. Lapley though, coming in, home guard, trying to make things happen, but this Cogmore just completely tearing apart this Lulu. Gonna run back towards the fountain, still dies to a crit there as Lulu backs up towards the fountain and a well-deserved drawn-out game there for Positive Energy. Absolutely fantastic League of Legends. We opened up with a giant killing this week, Pastry Time. Positive Energy made sure there wasn't two in a row. Just such amazing play. Just from one mistake from the EPHK side, you could argue two positioning mistakes. They won, they had to win about four to five fights in a row or go even. They couldn't afford to lose another objective just because the snowball had already begun. It was four turrets to one. But they played out their socks. Name eventually got to that six item point on Cogmore and they had the right answers and the right comp 
and just some fantastic team play. The return of the positive energy we knew, not the positive energy we saw against Young Glory. Well played. No, and looking strong here, week five, day one, halfway through the coverage here. Of course, if you have missed any of the matches, feel free to head over to YouTube.com. Two incredible games as well, Pastry Time. Yep, and if you want to rewatch all of those, and I bet you guys want to go back and check out some of those highlights, YouTube.com slash LolChamp Series is the link that you can click and you can check out not only the coverage from today, but of course, the week three and four coverage as well, all available for you there. Halfway through Tencent LPL Summer, week five, day one. Already shaping up to be an incredible weekend. We'll see what happens as we bring more coverage here. Tencent LPL Summer will be returning soon.